All right, we appear to be streaming. And I'm just going to take a moment here to open up my chat so that I can pay attention to what people are saying. Here we go. All right, turn that down. And we are good to go. How's everybody doing? I am Zmanzilla, and I'm going to be continuing my drawing of Psychotron. Now, this is a piece that was uh, commissioned by J.R. Crash, the creator of Psychotron. And I see Extra Halo. How you doing? It's, uh, good to see you. Glad you could join me for another session of drawing Psychotron. How's it going? You having a having a good day? I hope so. So let's uh, let's take a look at what I got so far here. So. Uh, Zoom out a little bit here. Take that text off the screen. Now, uh, we're still in basically the skeleton bones state here uh, for um, uh, just sort of the background here. Psychotron's going to be looming in the distance. We got the, the mech coming through here, and uh, JR Crash's avatar is going to be in the foreground. Now, I would really, really like to know how to get rid of that yellow that's sort of plaguing things there, but yeah, we'll manage. It's not going to. It's not a real deal breaker. Um, in any case, uh, what I have done in my downtime, let's go ahead and clear away some of these layers I don't need, is I, I tightened up the skeleton for uh, the, the the player avatar here. This is J.R. Crash's Doom guy here. What's up? And uh, I sort of tightened that up and got those lines fixed. And what I'm going to be doing today is uh, the ink layer for for that um, and if I have time I'm gonna attempt to do the color as well ink usually doesn't take me that long so um, so even though I got communication banned on Xbox live today what happened there let's uh, uh, you did you, you give some did you maybe uh, invite somebody to uh, maybe uh, do something for you there that maybe was a little unsavory I don't know <laughs> I don't know. I ain't judging. But uh, in any case, uh, we got to set up a new layer here. This is going to be... Uh, whoops. Make sure I'm on the correct image here. And we need to set up a new layer and call it... Um, uh, JR Inc. J Rank. Alright, so we're going to put that just above the pencil layer and take the opacity of that pencil down just a skosh so I can see what I'm doing more clearly. Very good. And go to our ink layer. We are, of course, going to be inking in black. And, okay, get our brush. And uh, we will start with, uh, yeah, let's start with like a. F uh, I want to do some of this detail work, and I, I really got to make sure I have my my reference image sort of uh, where I can see it. There we go, and there we go. Gears of War for Siebel, you know how they leave as soon as the match starts. Um, I I've not run into that. I don't play a lot of multiplayer, so I don't run into those problems quite as much. Um, but I'm familiar with people doing stuff like that and how annoying it really is um, so I'm I can relate but I, I can't exactly say for certain that I've experienced that particular thing um, as it were so oh you know what I want to do is um, let's throw it into smooth stroke mode maybe get a little closer to the face Um, again, it, I'm familiar enough with it to, to know exactly sort of the phenomena that you're referring to, but, uh, yeah, I can't say that I have had it happen to me per se. I didn't like the way that came out at all. So, there we go. Alright, you know, maybe we got to take the smooth stroke off and just, uh, or wait, 
Wait, don't I have a straight line tool I could be using? Where is it? Where is that? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Alright, well, I'm not going to sweat it too much. Just get closer, put your big boy pants on, and draw some doggone eyes, huh? Okay, so. Just keep locking like that. That's weird. Huh. I always get unreasonably annoyed when I have to get this close to things. But, uh... Hey, sometimes you just gotta, right? You know, you're trying to trying to get those details in there and <coughs> you know technically you only got to do it once and you do it right the first time you ain't got to do it again so There we go. That's that's the old pepper right there. There we go. Gives the image a 3D texture. Yeah. <coughs> Indeedly does. So, and then, let's see, there's not a whole lot going on in that area except for the sort of weird thing that's sort of right there. Okay, and then... Good, I nailed that one. So happy when I nail those lines on the first try. And then I go and immediately give myself a wobble line there. Oh, come on. There we go. And oh. We actually want it to go more sort of up in that direction. Yes. There. So. There we go. And oh yeah, and that's sort of the the ridge right there. So, there we go. And uh, this is all going to be sort of There we go. Yeah. 
Alright, now let's go ahead and work on that weird sort of Optimus Prime mouth thing he's got going on on, on his mouth area, you know. Technical art term there, mouth area. You'll find that I use a lot of technical terms for things. As in, I've technically made them up. <laughs> There we go. And Derp. Nope. That's a derp line. go. Yeah. Tell me I'm sexy. Yeah. All right. So if we get enough people in the chat, there's a game I want to try out where, um, something I used to play with my friends way back in the day and uh, the idea is that everybody provides a random word and then I have to try and make a story out of all those random words and it was uh, figured it could be a fun little sort of side game for us to play here but it's not as much fun if there's not a lot of people in the chat you know you really want there to be at least a couple people playing along otherwise it doesn't quite have the sort of randomness. And there we go. Yeah. Yes, indeedy. I, I don't have a really good view of what's going on in there because of sort of the shadows going on on my reference picture, so I got to kind of ad lib a little bit. But no, that's not a problem. So, all right. And then that's sort of this weird thing sort of connects up here like that. All right. And then. Pretty confident I can get away with just filling in all this stuff right here. I got this neat idea for a glow effect that I want to try out. Um, it's something I've done in other painting programs. I haven't tried to do it in GIMP yet. I don't think it'll be that much different. But basically, I want to try to make give the eyes kind of a glow uh, so that they're sort of similar to the way uh, JR Crash's avatar eyes look already. So. sort of fill in this whole area right here because this is, you know, I'm going to be trying to play a little more with uh, shadow on this one because there's some really cool shadow effects I've been watching other people draw on there like when I watch other people live draw on streams and things like that, like I've been watching some people do some cool stuff with shadow and it's about high time I tried some of that stuff out myself There we go. 
go. Ugh. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, definitely not. Is that going to be... Yeah. Alright, there we go. Save ourselves some time. I'll just zoom in and do that. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier to go in and fix edges than it is to sit there and scribble that entire area. The armor colors in Dom are very neat. Looks like they came out in 2020 <laughs> in Doom. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I love the a lot of the, the the armor options. I recently discovered, by the way, um, one of the new things that came with the update is the ability to have up to four suits of armor that you can switch between. So you can basically build four sets of armor and you know just switch between them whenever you want gives you like so what's cool about that for me at least is that I like to play around with the armor bits but I don't like um the idea of changing my my you know my main armor you know that I use for my videos because you know branding you know so but you know so I this gives me the ability to try out different stuff without having to ruin you know my my broadcast armor so I'm really I'm happy with that feature. That's a pretty cool new feature that they added. Like metallic better. Yeah. Actually, oh, I just realized something. I'm doing this like the hard way. I, like, let me show you like the easier way I could have done it. Like I'm just gonna just go ahead and color in this whole area black right here, and then like for shine marks and stuff, I really should be doing that just like with different colored ink. And not, you know, trying to add the effects before I even know, like, where my light sources are going to be and stuff, so I'm just going to color all that in for now. Okay. Yeah, I definitely dig the metallic things, but it, it like for some of my like armor ideas, it doesn't work out quite as well, you know. So let's see. All right, and then um, oh yeah, there's that extra little bit that's sort of underneath. I like so, and. It's also going to come up as all black, which, again, now if I was, 
using like a pencil or something that didn't have an anti-aliased edge, I wouldn't have to deal with these edges quite as much, but, you know. And of course, if I was using a, like, Adobe Photoshop or something to that effect, it wouldn't be happening at all, so, you know, it's, it's all a wash, so. But... So I really like would love it if it was like I'd like I think I, I think about cosplay and I wonder if there's anybody that's like actually making like you know doom guy armor for cosplays and stuff like that I mean I doubt anybody's making any sort of stuff for you know snap map because I don't know anybody that's even in the market to try to cosplay a snap map suit but I mean if there was somebody out there that was making snap map suits of armor I would like totally commission having my my custom armor made up into a suit for like cons and stuff. I would be just that much of a of a dork. <laughs> I'd probably actually wear the thing way too much. Like, I'd be at PTA meetings and people would be like, you know, I, obviously, you know, it's 2017 and we're all free to express ourselves, but, you know, why, why are you dressed in a full suit of fantasy demon killing armor? And I'd say, hey, you dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And they'd say, but isn't the job you have to be your daughter's father and I'd say I can do both great thing about having me as a dad is she's never going to have to worry about demons you know <laughs> like I'm pretty sure uh, our household has the demon problem licked you know there we go and uh There we go. And, oh yeah, there's that sort of weird little canister thing behind the neck. Time to get a little sip of my drink here. Excuse me a moment. Ah, the whistle is wet. <clears throat> I'll tell you, there's one thing I really wish about this stream, and that's that I could be playing music during it. I um, 
I usually listen to music while I'm drawing, but um, I've experimented with running a music app while I'm uh, while I'm streaming. It maxes things out so bad that I, I get cuts in my stream, so I can't do it. One of the uh, fundraising goals I have uh, for my long-term fundraising drive is uh, upgrading my computer so that I can run streams that I have, you know, things like music and, you know, better on-screen effects and things like that, you know, running. You know, and anytime I'm, like, for instance, running one of these, like, little games that I like doing, you know, I can, you know, I can sort of put elements on the screen related to those games. So, you know, things like that. So there's all kinds of little, you know, the idea is to just have a whole bunch of fun stuff going on on the screen so that, you know, it's not just listening to me sort of mumble about how a line didn't exactly draw the way I would like it to. You know just a thought so all right and then um okay this quadrant is sort of taken care of here let's go ahead and close up those lines there come on there we go and there we go Get those lines nice and snug up in there. Go to your home lines. What's your home? Okay. There we go. Dippity dang. Okay, hold on. There we go. Alright, so now I can kind of see what I'm... And then... There. That will do the thing. That will do the thing nicely. Okay. All right, and then um, oh yeah, the everything back here is going to be basically bathed in shadow. So I just really got to get an outline going. I remember that from my notes. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's what was going on. Okay, so... Get that... Get that nice tech belly going there. So... Yeah, if we get enough people in here, man, we could play a game. That would be fun. Could uh, play that game where I try to use random words to come up with a story. That could be fun. Okay, and... Ah. 
Eh. There it is. Okay. And then. to be a little lower I think there we go yeah cool beans all right and um, I back up just a little bit to remind myself what these other things are okay so yeah that's supposed to be another hose It's probably going to be part of that darkness uh, that uh, is set to basically blanket that whole area. So. to this shoulder here and getting that all squared away. Thanks for the extra line pen. All right, well, we're going to have to fix that anyway. Why why is everything getting so herky jerky here? As a the effect I was looking for. Okay. Alright. There we go. Yeah. Oh, looks pretty good to me. All right. Oh, yeah, we got to hit that other little nudule to get in there, huh? Okay. There we go. Okay. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, so... Huh? OK. 
Okay. There it is. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So. I love it when a line comes together. Okay. I think if I had to pick a part of drawing that is my least favorite step, it'd probably be the inking. But really sort of necessary to getting that cool effect that I like to have with all of my drawings. You know. It's one of the reasons I really wish I learned how to paint, you know, because painting, you, you structure your, your, your thing sort of from the color level first, and then you add your details based on that, and I'm not quite as good at thinking in that direction, so... I'll be filled in black. Let's see. All right, so now hmm. I seem to have uh Figuratively, at least, painted myself into a corner here. So, uh, because if I'm trying to use, okay, what's what is preventing you from drawing a small little line? There, there. Okay. All right, and then of course, oh yeah, I need more. Okay, so... Okay... Mm this correctly then all of this should be shadow black well let's find out yep that's what I was looking for okay
And then of course we got to go through and sort of fill in all of the little little stuff here. see this spot <laughs> yeah Diddly doop, diddly doop. There we go. Alright, let's back up a little bit and see how we did. Alright, so yep, that is definitely an arm bathed in shadow. That's yeah, that's the effect I was looking for. And uh, that's going to make uh, blending in the uh, the shadow for everything else that much easier. So, you know, sort of laying the groundwork for the um, method I'm going to be using for uh, the coloration. There, okay, so... Okay, and then, um, I think the next thing we're going to do is get this hand filled in, and I actually need to, all right, there we go. Ah, duck on it. All right, there. Butterfingers. All right, now. a weird, weird pattern. Oh, but there you have it. That's, that's what it looks like. So, uh, and then there's nothing...
There we go. Wait. Ew. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, let's try that again. Close enough for now, and then when I get to the, the color layer, just a couple little extra things I gotta. Okay. It's all done. We can go home now. No. <laughs> okay. I was uh, a little worried about that part, if I'm being completely honest here. And, I mean, it's still not 100% super duper, but it's where it needs to be to make the color work. And, like I said, most of my... Most of the technique ends up coming out just fine in the color, uh, in the color layer, so... Actually, most of the the gun is going to end up in um, end up with some sort of shadow effect on it, one way or another. Oh, that's awful! I hate that line. Okay, so I have a feeling I'm going to need to find my tool-assisted solution here. Uh, let me see here. Could have swore. Oh yeah, that's what it was. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let's get my uh, shotgun reference picture on the ready here because I'm about to start drawing a shotgun, a combat shotgun, and I need reference for that. So, all right. So. 
There's sort of this bit that Hmm. So I just got a news <coughs> alert alert alerting me that Verizon was caught violating net neutrality and uh you know, <laughs> which is interesting enough because it appears to be coming from an unsolicited source. So it's like, well geez, thank goodness for all this net neutrality that uh keeps the internet a fair and reputable place. I mean, obviously, it's a far more complex issue than than I'm. I'm being comically reductive, <coughs> but um, still, it's like. All right, so and then. Um, That's terrible. That second little nudule that's sort of down here that doesn't seem to do much of anything. To make it look more shotgunny, I suppose. Um, and then. side. Let me see if that's going to... Oh, I see. there. Doodingers, the fresh maker. <coughs> okay. is definitely not right. Okay. Okay. So section right there that's a little weird so there we go and I 
there. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, and uh, like that. Okay, so I'm going to need some, uh, definitely the, the color is what's going to have to sell the shape of the, the shotgun, I think, here. that little thingy that's on the top there that I want to go ahead and at least try to represent somehow. Yeah, um, no, you know. All right, let's... It's all going to be shadow black, so. There we 
go. go. Ah, da kann ich. Oh, sorry about the slight break in the stream there. That's there we go. Goodness, that thing is crawling. Anarchy Gaming, how you doing today? Thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. So I'm uh, this is where I'm at so far on this particular Doom guy that I'm drawing. This is um, going to be JR Crash's uh, Snap Map avatar here that I'm I'm doing, uh, and I'm I'm just preparing the ink and shadow layers right now to. Honestly, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. So I'm, um, this will eventually be a poster for Psychotron. And, uh, so JR Crash, uh, commissioned. And, you know, he's, the uh, the guy that made Psychotron and a uh, buddy of mine and he also has a channel Bopkins Plays Doom and where he does snap map reviews as well and so this is a really kind of a 
big opportunity on several fronts this particular piece so but he uh, he commissioned this so Seeing the Psychotron was so cool, it really pushed my limit of what Snapmap could do. I'll tell you what, yeah. I mean, the first time I ever saw Psychotron in action, I was like, holy cow. Someone went ahead and actually dug on did it. They animated Custom Geo. It is, a, yeah, it's amazing. Like, one of the problems with Psychotron is that <laughs> now, now that it's been finished, nobody can actually open it in the editor. It's really weird. Like, there's some weird bug with it now where uh, nobody can open it up in the editor. And uh, kind of sucks, uh, especially for me because I was, I was, when I was trying to do the research for this, I would have loved to have been able to just go into the map and like get the shots I needed, um, and I wasn't able to do that. And so, like, uh, JR Crash had to actually go into the map for me and get those shots. on this pen. But yeah, it's a really awesome board. I, I did a, a video about scoring strategies for, for Psychotron. Because, I mean, I've, like I said, I've played a bunch of it. And I kind of figured out the secret to scoring high on Psychotron. And, uh... Really, the trick is that it turns out that the final boss against Psychotron throws infinite enemies at you. And so there's this really great sort of risk-reward thing that happens at the end where if you don't use the BFG too much, because if you use the BFG, it also harms Psychotron. So as long as you keep Psychotron alive, you can just sit there and just kill and kill and kill. Now there's a risk-reward system involved with that, because the second you die, you lose all your points. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, a neat way to do that. But basically, if you can, like, sit there and, y if you know what the high score for Psychotron it is, is at any given time, and you can just sit there and just keep play it, you know, keep killing things until you beat it, or just get bored or whatever, and then um, submit your high score that way, and you can end up with, like, a ridiculously high score on Psychotron. Um, it really just comes down to how much patience do you have, you know? Uh, I do not like the way that that came out, so... the. This, oh, gee, many Christmas, these brushes are huge. Okay. That's better. Alright, and then. for now. The rest of that uh, will get worked out in the color layers there, so. Alright. Uh, 
some reason. It, it, it's probably because of the uh, the processor uh, thing that's going on here, but um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that's why my brush is getting real herky jerky when I'm trying to do fast stuff. Oh, so the next uh, build of SCP Containment Breach is about to come out. That's awesome. We've really been putting a lot of work into that, man. That's so awesome. You know, like, there's so many people out there that do, like, you know, remakes and tributes and things like that and put such a minimum effort into it. And one thing I always respected about your <coughs> SCP Containment Breach board is the significant, significant improvements that have happened from version to version. Now, you know, I mean, and, you know, you know me, I'm I'm not really into horror boards to begin with, but like, I really like one of the things I do like doing is going in and seeing how things improve and SCP containment breach has definitely improved. I am really stoked on your behalf that you've been sticking with it. Trying to see if at any point you can see the see the grid room. Um, like um, I mean, at some point, if I'm if I'm testing it, uh, uh, yeah, I can certainly go in and see if I'm able to see the grid room. Um, Oh man, I, I had a, actually I have a note written down that I need to go uh, go back into SCP Containment Breach and test some things, and I'm really sorry about that. I completely like last night was like I was doing stuff uh, for people and in Snap Map, and I totally blanked on that, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, so I will have to hit it up the next time. Why did I put stripes over there? That don't make no sense. I think that was actually supposed to be more shadow. It's an extension of the shadow area. Blended up just about where I needed to be. Added a flare system into it as well, so which should help out with the darkness because you know SCP containment breach can be dark, and I tried to implement it in Snap Map, but it gets too dark. Um, have you tried? Um, there's there's two atmospherics. There's atmosphere night and atmosphere dark. I think they're called, and one of them is lighter than the other. And I feel like just using the one that's lighter would give you that same mood that you're looking for, but with visibility. So you could probably, you know, get away with that. See, one of the things is that that with when people are uh, making their boards, you know, dark and moody, it's like you know, there's, you know, the the you can you can yeah the the since what they're going for is dark, they automatically pick the darkest dark, you know, and you know without realizing that, you know, you don't necessarily have to pick the darkest dark for people to know that it's dark. I mean, they'll, they can see that it's dark, you know, <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be super dark, you know. I mean, I, I definitely understand the, um, oh, you know what, I was just thinking of something the other day, I was playing a ball, a board by, um, his name is Bowles, B-A-W-S-E, um, and he he incorporated a mechanic in it that didn't make sense in his board, but would make perfect sense in SCP Containment Breach. He did a uh, a blink mechanic, like he actually had a thing where like the the character blinked using a um, using the player camera thing, and that's like directly from SCP Containment Breach, and it's actually an important part of the of the game. So I was like sitting there, I was thinking of you when I saw it. I was like, oh yeah, man, do you know who would dig this? Freaking Anarchy. So, hmm. okay.
see. I know how I could implement that with the thing I was testing out the other day, something much like SCP-172 with custom geo animations like in Psychotron, but I couldn't find a good blinking thing. Yeah, so the way, uh, if I recall correctly, that they, they did the blinking was they um, they were using um, uh, the, they were using the player camera settings, and the idea was it was on a timer, and like every time the timer would run out, it would fade to the like all black, and then like uh, a tenth of a second later would fade back to regular um, and it would do that sort of periodically and like you could probably hook that up to where like you know you could have that timer running but at the same time on a button press like say user input one or something like that you know the player can like blink early like in SCP containment breach and that early blink push button would reset the timer run the effect and, and then you know or basically you just have it so that every time the effect is run it resets the timer probably be the way to do that but but you know yeah I was uh, I was definitely thinking about uh, SCP container breach when I was uh, when I was observing that I was going let's see I need a That'll do. That would be uh, kind of tough now that I think about it. Because uh, the thing with the custom geo is that you'd, unless you were building like a, you know, like a custom geo model of your character, like every five feet or something, so that you could animate all those instances of the of the creature, that'd be pretty uh, resource heavy, I think. Just a wild guess. I mean, like, uh, that's the thing too. Is like, just because you know, I might not even be thinking of the same implement implementation method that you are. So, so I'm thinking about, well, just, this is how I would do it, and it's like, why does it matter how I would do it? I would never do it. You know, <laughs> like I, I, uh, I haven't built a horror board, and not likely I will. And just. Uh, too much of a wuss IRL, really. That's really what it comes down to. I, th I 
feel like I'm at a point here with the drawing where if I don't start doing color, I'm, I'm not going to have a clear indication of where I need to be doing my shadow black. So I think I'm going to finish up the this shadow black here. And then I'm going to focus on adding a color layer. And I think once the color layer happens, it, my shadows will make a lot more sense. It'll help me contextualize. So working on, oh, come on. Okay, are we running again? Okay, there we go. I'm also working on custom geometry and more open world. There's things like in the real game, so it's not so linear, which could help players with, with opening the back up again, you know? Yeah. Or the map up, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, like, for, I do know, like, with the other SCP, like, part of the appeal was all the exploration, you know, and so, I mean, you know, you don't necessarily have to have custom geo to make a board explory, I mean, you know, just sort of adding, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is sure annoying. I keep losing the stream. Yeah, my oh, my computer is such butt. All right, let me see something here. Oh, well, I can't. I can't. So I got the basic uh, stuff down here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears, and uh, we're going to take out the pencil layer, by the way. I think I'm pretty much done with that. Well, not entirely, but enough to kind of get, get by here. And uh, we're going to start working on the I'm gonna set up a color layer. So uh, JR Color. This will be our base colors layer. All right. And for starters, we're going to go with a nice, a nice gray here. Okay. And change our brush to something much harder. give ourselves a nice base layer to start with here.
All right. I wish they could do something with SnapMap load times because it makes it a hassle to even anything without wasting time when you're on a tight schedule. But have you played The Last of Doom? Really good custom geometry board, some funny moments of good storytelling. The name sounds familiar, um, but I'm not confirming that I've, I'm familiar with it because uh, why did I do all that? That's This is a base layer. Um, there. Okay. So... Uh, I'm not familiar with it. Um, it. It sounds. I mean, I'm familiar with the name. I've I've seen um, other people have have reviewed it. All right. Let's see. Okay, that's a good color pair there. Now let's uh, get our brush down to a reasonable sort of size here, and. Um, but yeah. All right. Okay. So let's see. Boom. There we go. go. That's that part. What's up, RGF Solid? Can't sleep? <laughs> so you figured you'd watch me draw. That should help you sleep. <laughs> How you doing? I am always glad to do my part in the fight against insomnia. in a minute. Also working on another board that kind of overwhelms the player with enemies, but not too much to make it feel like it's a horde of enemies, but it's balanced. The enemies are weak, but do good damage. Um, you know who's really good at that is uh, Void Runner. <coughs> He's really good at making what people like to call the horde of horrors. And uh, one of his favorite things to do is just take a bunch of horde imps and like just have it so like it, it throws like 50 of them at you. And uh, it's always fun to fight those. I was thinking about a parry mechanic for my next map. A parry mechanic? How would you, uh... I'm intrigued. How how would... What would you be parrying, I guess, is the question. Pretty sure I told you to copy this color. Okay. There we go. That is really unusual. Why is it doing that? I 
This isn't difficult. What are you having a problem with, computer? Oh, is it because my brush is too wide or something stupid like that? Uh, gimp fail, I swear to God. There we go. Oh, and even then, that's not even a color match. What? How... How do you fail at this, Gimp? It's a very simple request. Copy a color you just colored. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I agree. How do you uh, how do you do a parry mechanic? And again, like I, I'm I'm more curious about sort of what is it that's being parried? Like, uh, if the player is hurt, you have a 0.5 second window to do 100 damage to the mean. Oh, oh, uh, repost like a sort of I guess or like kind of a repost kind of thing. Um, or a, uh, not a repost, a, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, well, a parry, yeah. Is an RPG type? Uh, wouldn't necessarily have to be an RPG. That could very easily be a, um, like, just a anything, kind of, really. That's, that, that's a neat idea. I, uh, I dig what you're throwing down there. All right, let's see. So next is going to be this uh, army thingy here. Uh, just thinking about mechanics. Yeah, <laughs> dug on autocorrect. But, uh, yeah, that's sounds like a fun mechanic. I would definitely enjoy testing that bad boy out. Okay. Doom for about four minutes now. Holy crap! Yeah, no, d d like it used to be like only like two minutes, and then it's most recently kind of gotten closer to three, um, which is a little weird. Um, I mean, you know, one of the barriers of Snap Map is the, you know the the loading times. You know, <laughs> like they, they are they are ridiculous loading times, and you know, I mean, it, it's not so much that uh, oh well, you know, whether you might, might or something like that. It's in addition, like fortunately, the main game now sort of loads up a whole lot quicker than it used to, which is good. But 
still, like, the idea that the, the game has to, it takes so long to load up is really kind of off-putting to sort of people just playing casually. Fortunately, that free weekend, um, the, those couple of free weekends brought in some some new folks. I've been seeing a lot more stuff on the uh, review queue, and I am almost positive that the giant jump in uh, plays that Devil City Ransom got has to do with the free uh, the free weekend. Like right now, if you go into uh, Community Spotlight, Devil City Ransom is the had, is the number one most played uh, Community Spotlight map. Um, it's uh, Void Runner still has more upvotes. I mean, there's doggone near a thousand people that downvoted Devil City Ransom, but um, you know, uh, it's got the most plays total. Uh, there were two of them. There were two uh, recently. There were a couple of free play weekends uh, for yeah, you know, just and uh, that and then like during that period in time, they were also offering Doom at a special lower cost. To kind of bring in more people, it was sort of a way to celebrate the, um, you know the, uh, what should I call it, the freaking update, you know, so, which you know not not a, not the worst idea they ever had, you know, just kind of let people know, okay, well, you know, a lot of stuff got goofed up, and we are very sorry, sorry about that, but you know. As a way to sort of get people playing again, here's a, here's a bunch of free time on it. So, all right, and then let's see. Uh, more load time means more assets. <laughs> right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, the thing is, it's like uh, loading times, like, for the maps themselves aren't the only problem. There's the loading time for, like, getting into Snap Map in and of itself. And those high load times don't necessarily mean more assets, especially if you're dealing with people that don't optimize their boards very well. Like, you know, for example, they, they, don't, they don't set static to true for any, uh, for their props. And, you know, they, they just like overuse a lot of stuff and things like that like i mean just because they're using a ton of assets doesn't really mean anything positive um you know it just it means that they you know used a lot of assets to make whatever it is they made i mean you know <laughs> if you put more poop on the pile you just have a bigger pile of poop you know so um uh, uh I wish that we could create animation for Doom. Oh, yeah, I know, man. You kind of can, in a way. I, you can um, you can use sequencers to animate the pieces, basically. That's like uh, uh, how Psychotron works, for example. Um, I mean, I, I realize that's probably not strictly speaking what you meant, but, you know, that is sort of what can be done. Let's see here. All right, so, and then I think what I'm going to do is, even though this is a base layer, I'm going to make a second shade of gray that's darker than the first for some of the under, undery armor stuff, I think. Or actually, the, 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 there's like, the, there's this weird sort of like three-tone thing that's going on with this armor where some of the stuff is like a darker shade than others. Um, so we'll just use that for that. Like, for instance, this part. What's up, Nocturnal GX? Uh, GTX, how you doing? Uh, regarding the line work, did you do it from scratch or use a reference model? Um, a little of both, I guess. Um, I, I'm looking at pictures of stuff but um I, I i look at a picture to kind of get sort of like where stuff is um i'm not i i i had to create the pose from scratch um and i did that using what i call a skeleton which is kind of just sort of a rough sort of i want a hand to be here and an arm to be here and stuff and then like i go back in and i scribble sort of a rough draft in what i call my pencil layer 
Um, and then from the pencil layer, I, I do my, my ink layer to do my lines. Um, so it's, it's sort of a anywhere from a two-step to a three-step process, depending on how complicated I want to make it for myself. Now, don't get me wrong, in some cases, I will directly just sort of throw a picture up there and, you know, trace out some lines just to kind of get, you know, like for really complex things where I'm trying to get a shape or something, but I did not do that for this one. I'm not against the technique, I just didn't do it for this one. So. Do you ever play Dark Souls? Oh, pff, yeah. I have logged days of time in Dark Souls. Yeah, still haven't gotten that far, though. <laughs> that, that, that game kicks the crap out of me, and I love every moment of it. I am such a masochist when it comes to Dark Souls. Darkles is the jam, yo. <laughs> and jam a thing in my eye and twist it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I love the that's I think that's the main reason I love Dark Souls is just it's it's very inspiring in a lot of ways, you know, just the sort of bleakness of the entire world that it takes place in and everything it sort of represents. It's really kind of neat. All right, so what else do I have to do that to? Well, probably the earbud things, and actually, I do need to. Yeah, I need to make that darker too. I think. Okay, let's bring our. I'm still can't say I can't sleep. Attempted some drawings, but used the third method, copy paste the lines. For some reason, I can't publish VO9. Oh, what are you getting? Some sort of an error when you try to publish? Um, the third copy paste the lines thing. So uh, when you say copy paste the lines, do you mean are you like just trying to like are you like putting down like a photo or a picture or something and then just using that to trace the lines, or are you doing something different? Drawing an illustrator, 50 people passing, and create a second later to trace the lines. Hmm. Something like that. So that's, yeah, no, I've, I have done that before as well. Like one of the, one of my money makers, like sort of like if I really need money, like, and uh, I, you know, I can count, there's one thing I can always count on, which is I can do portraits and, the way I'm able to, you know, sort of 
you make money on them is I, I charge like a low price. Like I'll charge like 20, 30 bucks a pop for them. And then um, I'll say, okay, but you got to provide a photo. And then they provide me with a photo and then I can use, I can just basically trace the photo and then, you know, apply my own, you know, line and color work from there. Because really the, the most, the, the hardest and most time consuming part of every piece is actually the, the sketch and initial ink layers, uh, you know, so it's like uh, if I can save myself some time by, you know, doing them a different way, I will, you know, so. Oh, this uh, this is gonna get the that treatment as well. I think here. But you know, yeah, I mean, it's it's a perfectly valid method. In fact, you know, the thing is too, way back in the day, you know, I mean, like, or I won't say way way back in the day, but there was a period in time when artists used to use um, projectors. And, you know, they would project, you know, an image uh, up onto, uh, you know, like, a, let's say they had a canvas. They would project, you know, a, you know, a, a photograph or whatever they were using for reference onto the canvas so that they had something to sort of, you know, look at and just directly reference. So, I mean, it's, it's not an unknown technique at all, so... Congrats on 200 subscribers. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm still I'm still not 100% certain what I'm going to do to celebrate it. I know I got to do something, you know, but I'm not sure what yet. Ah. And uh oh, you know what I need to do is uh take a look at the my shotgun reference again. Which, yeah, technically I could probably just use the same doggone colors, couldn't I? All right, so. Um, let's see. Makes things simpler on me, doesn't it? All right, so. Now. can't believe SCP has reached 100 plays. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, Tunnels of Darkness. Um, is Tunnels of Darkness the one that had the... Or was it the... Oh, right. Oh, you know what? This. Yeah, you two are the ones that need to talk to each other. RGF Solid, uh, your balls, right? Um, I'm almost positive. I think it was the... Was it the, the Dark Laboratory one? That you had the, um, the blinking effect? The blinking mechanic? Um... If uh, uh, you you really need to talk to Anarchy Gaming because he's doing an, an SCP containment breach uh, board and SCP containment breach that the, the game that he's basing his his map off of has a blinking mechanic in it and I bet if the two of you collabed on that you could come up with a way to incorporate that blinking mechanic in a way that uh, that works with the gameplay like I I just think that would be like the most awesome sort of Marvel team up right there. Like, I think that, you know, I wasn't crazy about the way the, the blinking mechanic worked in the lab one, but I, I think it was still an awesome mechanic, and I think uh, it would work uh, equally well, if not, if not better, in the SCP Containment Breach, because it's an element of SCP Containment Breach. So, but hey, congratulations on 100 plays. Um, it's awesome. All right, now... Okay, so that's uh, that's my color base. Let's uh, now do. Uh, oh, you know what? Check this out. I think I'm gonna try to do that glowy effect real quick while I'm in the mood. So, all right. Um, all right. So this gonna be a wee bit tricky. So bear with me here. So first things first. I have to grab a sort of bright blue here 
and then get myself a nice uh, a nice small brush Maybe I shouldn't do the full glow effect until after I put down my light and shade layers because that'll mess it up. So. Mm. Blinking best me. <laughs> 1010 IGM. You want to collaborate, bro? I did not sell that right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all should y'all have a lot to talk about. I think you got uh, you both uh, have a, a penchant for cool mechanics and darkness, and I think the two of you could definitely uh, uh, come up with something awesome. And of course, if you have any questions about how collaboration works in Doom Snap Map, I can answer those. So, as I have collaborated with uh, Void Runner and BAD Fluppy, although the BAD Fluppy one still hasn't been finished, and that's all on me. I'm honestly, I, I, you know, I know the technique behind collaboration, but ultimately, I'm not a very good person to collaborate with because of the way my brain works. Like, one minute I'm all, you know, totally gung-ho and I'm going to do this thing. And then the next minute I get obsessed with building a city for two weeks. Like, devil say, like I, the reason why my collab boards still aren't done is because I sort of got, I had like a dream one night that I was building a city and it turned into Devil City Ransom. So, hmm. But that's the best part about collaborations is, and you learn so much from them, so... I collab with Void Runners, the reason I know about the 12 AI limit. That's where I learned that. But yeah, I learned about the 12 AI limit from my collaboration with Void Runner. And, oh, come on. Alright, well, thanks for stopping by, Nocturnal GX. How you David Alcaraz, how you doing? Almost done with Sankum of Tune Episode 10. May release sometime today. Hey, congratulations. That's awesome. Hey, hey, just uh, 20 more, uh, just 10 more episodes, you'll be all cut up with loose screw, huh? <laughs> uh, so. He's uh, barely finished with Loose Screw 2, and he's already setting up that Loose Screw 3 hype. Like. <laughs> oh, working on a SCP-70... What's that? Uh, SCP-173 is one of the monsters from the original SCP Containment Breach. Uh, and if it's the one I, I'm thinking of, man, that's... It, I, don't, I don't imagine that one would be too hard to build in Custom Geo, I think. Uh, and, of course, obviously you're not going to have to worry about animation. But um, I get the impression, though, that um, that one's going to be tough to add to a map. <laughs> not impossible. Just tough. I wish you all the luck with it because I would love to see an SCP-173 in action. Uh, 
honestly, Lou Screw is way better than my series. Wish I could copy like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid the, the pool's closed on all the puppet show stuff. He's the official winner, you know. Such a winner. So, uh, Really, though, in all seriousness, I think if I ever have to play another episode of Loose Screw in my entire life, I'm going to scoop out my own eyeballs with a melon baller. Like... I know I don't normally like to talk. Oh, come on. You know, I'd, I'd probably gonna scoop up my eyes with a melon ball if I have to play another episode of Loose Screw. But um, if I, uh, yeah, just no. <laughs> Did that, uh, is that basically everything I want to hit up? Unless, did I have to do something with the fingers, maybe? No. Maybe I should do the fingers, just because, you know, I'm apparently doing the gun the same color, so it sort of makes sense. I can't update the map to V9, I'll just give you V8. Well, that sucks. So does me constantly drop in my stream. Ah, oh, there we go. Folks, I am really sorry about the quality of this stream. That's like one of my goals right now is uh, to upgrade my computer equipment so this stops happening. What's happening is my my processor is getting completely maxed out like every couple minutes. I can't tell if it's just some weird thing that's running in the background or just, you know, I, I just think my computer sucks, so. It's the most likely explanation, so. go. <coughs> um, so how does collaboration work? So the, the way collaboration works is that what happens is one of you works on a thing like a map uh, and then um, once you get the map to a certain state you know where like the other person's going to add whatever their contribution is um, the first person and the second person talk amongst themselves like using whatever chat program they have or whatever and they uh, they agree on when they're going to meet up and um, the person that has been doing the work goes ahead and, and publishes the map, not for review, just plain old publish. And then the other person downloads it and then lets the first person know they downloaded it first person deletes it the other person adds their stuff and you can basically pass the map back and forth that way um, so what happens is whoever the first person to work on the map is um, they're the ones that are, whose name is going to be under original author so if you're doing a collaboration the best way to do it is you whoever the original author is is not the person that pu publishes the final map for review. Um, and then, of course, in the description, you'd sort of, and maybe somewhere in the map, you throw up some, you know, this is a collaboration between these two people thing. But that way, if you, you know, that way both of your names are on the map, basically, is you have whoever, like, started the map gets to be the original author, and then the other person is the publishing author, and 
you know, you just put some sort of credit somewhere in there to say that, you know, these are the people that worked on it. Like, technically, Outcast M4 is a collaboration map um, because uh, he, uh, I made a, um, like, sort of a rocky area, and Void Runner used that as part of that map. So, you know, uh, Outcast M4 is a collaboration between, you know, Void Runner and Z Manzilla, and he published it, but, you know, my name's on it as well. Make sense? So, all right. So now, I feel like my color layer is in a good spot, and I can start doing my, my shades. So, and I can probably, at this point, delete my pencil layer and my blue sketch. So, that should free up some resources at least. Cool. Cool. All right. So there's my color base. I need a uh, JR shade base. All right. And uh, hey, lucky us! I get to uh, get to do some coloring now, or some shading even. So that's going to be awesome. So let's uh, use that shade. Uh, get our opacity down to about uh, 20. And um, let's see. Yeah, some of that shade's going to have to go on the ink layer, unfortunately. But that's okay, because I'm doing some glow effects anyway. So, um, all right. So, now. And size should be about... Meh? Yeah, meh. Okay, that's really weird. That seems a little harder than I would have thought it would have been. Snap apps loading, see in four minutes. Gonna go watch some game design vids. Cool, cool. Uh, if you're uh, if you're leaving, then thanks for stopping by. I uh, I do appreciate people hanging out with me while I draw.
like that one. There, that's fine. What is loose screw again? Uh, okay. <laughs> wow. So, loose screw... Uh, I, I, okay, uh, let me preface this by saying that I'm not a huge fan of, like, spreading rumors or anything like that. Uh, but uh, since a lot of the sort of events that made loose screw famous do involve me, uh, <laughs> I feel like I am at somewhat at liberty to talk about it. So, loose screw was a... Um, it is, I should say, a, a map by... A, an author by the name of Perfect Pastel, and the the maps themselves are not very good. Let's put it that way. Um, but what has made them infamous is the uh, the the author's behavior uh, when it comes to getting his trying to get his maps uh, published. There's a video on my channel called uh, the loose screw documentation of the loose screw incident, and basically what what happened was um, I was reviewing a map for another uh, mapper, and he dis he got my um, Xbox uh, ID and started uh, PMing me through Xbox Live to come play his map and I kept telling him repeatedly I'm on stream I'm on stream leave me alone and he just bugged and harassed me so much that I did the stupid thing and finally caved in and he took me uh, he he invited me to play his map and like literally the only thing the map was was a bios page for like and first off it, bios pages are terrible like I mean like, seriously if you if if your characters if you can't tell people who your characters are through natural storytelling techniques, a bio is not going to help us out. And it wasn't even a good bio. Like, it was literally just like they told... The bio told you almost nothing about any of the characters, just basically their names. You know, it was really terrible. And and then that uh, transitioned directly into, like, a fight with a baron that went nowhere. And it was just really, you know, unfun and... He had pulled me away from another person's map, so it was also really disrespectful to the other mapper, and you know just everything that was wrong with it. And then he he kind of took a huge attitude because I told him I didn't appreciate it, and um, so I, I documented the incident. And he's kind of gone on to become kind of infamous in the uh, Snap Map review circles for just basically, you know horrible maps and a, and a lousy attitude if you ever want to just have a laugh like go like just do a just do a youtube search at some point for like loose screw and watch some of the videos people have done of loose screw like i the, it is very rare for him to ever to to get anything resembling a good review from anyone and when anybody tries to give him feedback he just loses his dog on mind and you won't you won't see that part cuz a lot of times he he'll he'll delete those comments but yeah, he just uh, <laughs> he he he's he's poorly behaved. Let's put it that way. And um, I have actually, I I have I have flat I have straight up banned him from my channel and from ever getting any of his maps reviewed. And he's the only person. Uh, well, one minor exception. Like I uh, I've told uh, uh, there's another artist by the name of Justin eighty three that I said I won't I won't publish his maps until he. Uh, confirms that he's actually using my my feedback for the intended purpose and not just to kind of get his maps played on YouTube, you know, which, you know, I don't mind, but it's like, you know, you take the good with the bad, and he just, his, he, he has a, 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 what I would consider irritated, uh, just Justin83, has what I would consider kind of a um, irritating design philosophy, which is he thinks that you know, he can just sort of throw assets together in, you know, literally less than an hour and call it a map and be on even footing with everybody that spends days and weeks and months on their maps, you know, and it's really irritating because he'll bug me and bug me. He'll say, please play my map, please play my map. And I finally play one of his maps and it's, it's the same, it has the same problems as every other map of his I've played. And I tell him and he doesn't do anything about it. And you look at his map list and he's got over 260 some odd maps on it. And, you know, so it's like, 
well, you know, I don't know why I got to keep banging my head against the wall because you know, you don't want to listen. I mean, I'm, I've told you flat out, you know, I don't enjoy your maps and I don't, I'm, it's, I mean, this is my hobby. It's not my job to play your maps on YouTube and make you internet famous, you know, <laughs> and frankly, you're, you're sort of in the running to be internet famous for all the wrong reasons. So, <laughs> you know, um, but again, you know, it's not like I'm trying to be mean to people here. I mean, I go I go well out of my way to try to not be mean to people. Uh, but, you know, there does... Uh, everybody has a breaking point. And mine just happens to be, if I have to tell you for the tenth time, hey, you know, if you're going to put POIs in your level, friggin', you know, don't leave the default POI text sort of floating there. It looks goofy and unprofessional, you know. Um, you know... It, or the other one that, uh, <laughs> trying episode one, wish me luck. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need it. Good luck. Um, freaking, oh my goodness. Uh, see, that's what I was afraid of. I was afraid the Streisand effect was going to happen, and now everybody's going to want to play Loose Screw. It's going to become the, uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show slash The Room of Snap Maps, which is really not what I wanted. I just, like, I mean, it'd be one thing if the maps were just bad, you know, like I, I it, like with loose screw. It's I, I don't have, you know, like I've played bad maps before and I've been able to walk away from them just fine and be like, OK, well, I didn't enjoy that map very much, whatever, and just move on with my life. But it's not often that the creator of a bad map follows you around insisting that, oh, no, no, no. See, the problem is that you didn't play the other nine episodes of this terrible map. You know, had you played the other nine episodes of this terrible uh, th that come after this terrible map, uh, you would you would like it, you know. And so he, he thinks I'm going to sit there and play all ten. And uh, no, no, you know, it's like which that's the other thing, too, is he's he's created a campaign, but he doesn't use the next the next map settings for the campaign. So he expects the people playing his maps to go hunt down the next episode. And he's like, seriously, he has been given that feedback by every reviewer that he talks to. Every reviewer tells him, you, you need to be using next map if you seriously expect people to sit there and play a 10-part series. You know, then you need to you need to use next map to send people to the next episode. There's absolutely no reason to not. And he just doesn't. He doesn't even ask how to do it. He just doesn't bother, you know. It's just so... And, like, you know, just clunky dialogue and very little gameplay. <laughs> it's just... Like I said, Ed, you're better off... Uh, there's two ways for me to go, but it tells me not to go. I'm confused. Um, yeah... That <laughs> I wish I could. T I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this right now. If you take the high road, it uh, it pretty much ends the board. So, <laughs> like it it you know you just you win. <laughs> if you take the low road, it's a gank and you lose. You know it's stupid. It's um, yeah. Alright, I really feel like I overdid a little bit on the light layers for this one, but... You are asking the wrong dude if you think I know what the point is. <laughs> Let me tell you. I seriously, I don't get it. I don't understand a thing. I don't understand thing one about what is supposed to be, you know, going on in anything loose screw related. None of it makes sense to me. And I've said as much repeatedly and he's still like, and now, now he's got loose screw two, you know, like he literally like made another 10-part series that's supposed to be a sequel to the first one. And he harassed the crap out of me to play that, too, which is hilarious because he's banned from my channel. So he he had to make 
a bunch of shadow puppet accounts to accomplish that. Like, it literally took way too much of my time to, like, deal with all of the shadow puppet accounts that he created. There's no POIs. Yeah. <laughs> That's one noteworthy problem, I guess. <laughs> like, oh my god. The, like, I mean, you know, the big glaring one being that it's a, it's a very story-driven board, but none of the story makes any doggone sense. You know, you're supposed to give a crap about these characters that aren't even the least bit interesting. You know, you know, we're talking about uh, characters with all the complexity of a Fisher Price, you know, scrap of paper, basically, like. I guess my point is it's just not very good. But God, he loses his mind if you tell him that. And the funny part is too, he also loses his mind every time you you uh like um there have been reviewers that have mistaken him for like having a mental illness. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily a mistake. He's definitely kind of, you know, I mean, like I th I I do legitimately think he's got some sort of OCD or something like that just from my own experience and I'm not making fun of that but the thing is I don't I don't care what's going on I mean there are just some things you don't do and one of them is harass people you do not follow them around the internet harassing them to play your snap map especially you know no means no is I don't care what you have no means no is the rule you know that goes for so many situations in life so, but you know that said, like if you if you like I like I, I I thought honestly like the first time I interacted with him I thought he was a very impolite child, like I thought he was like I I could have swore he was like you know just from the way he was sort of acting I was like I think I'm dealing with a younger person here, like and so like my first feedback to him was very sort of you know as if I was addressing a child and that was because I legitimately thought I was addressing a child. And he lost his dog on mind. He told me, oh, I'm 19. A kid couldn't make this map. Kids, he said, stupid kids couldn't make this map. Which, you know, <laughs> considering I play maps from people much younger than 19 that are far better than Loose Screw. That's kind of a stupid thing to say. So, hey, Ron, let's go save Charlie. Yeah, roll credits. Ever thought of a sprint mechanic? Uh, I'm a kid. Yeah, I mean... Dude, seriously, like I I play maps from from young young folks all the time, you know, teenagers and younger, you know, and you know, age is not does not define what a good map is. But again, you know, he's he's not hearing that part. He's just hearing the part where he 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 wants me to be like insulting him because that way if I'm insulting him, then he can retaliate and you know, that's what he really wanted to do, I think, was retaliate. So but you know it's whatever. I, like I said, I won't deal with them anymore. Um, I I do periodically have to deal with them. Like um, for a while there, I was like I I did take the loose screw incident video down from my my page because you know branding. Um, but I had to put it back up because once that video got taken down, he started going back to harassing YouTubers, and I was like, all right, we got to start protecting our own here. So I. Uh, I put the videos back up. Oh, 
Oh shit. And it's permadeath. Yeah. Yeah. I seriously, it's freaking permadeath. Like I, I I just don't I, I don't understand what he was thinking. Like as far as I'm concerned, if the literally the only thing going on in your board is a story, then why even bother with a death mechanic, you know? Like Like, do you just not... I mean, you know, you're... I don't, I don't understand why anybody would do that. So, so it's one of those situations where I'd, I've, I've caught myself on occasion. It doesn't make it into many of my final videos, but I have on occasion caught myself saying, oh, really, you think you deserve permadeath? Like, I feel like a board has to earn permadeath. Like, I think before any board gets... Uh, it signs off, uh, Any map maker signs off on the idea of making their map permadeath, like, they should really do a lot of, you know, there, there should really be a very important reason for it. Like, I should be able to talk to a map maker and say, okay, so what, what, what is it about your map necessitates permadeath, you know, and for them to be able to say something other than, well, I didn't know how to program lives, you know. Because, <laughs> you know, you can learn how to implement lives. It's not a, not the hardest thing in the world to do, I mean. And of course my resources are going eight buggy again, lovely. And I think my resources just went all eight buggy again. Um I'm really sorry about that. Really need a better computer. Wah. There we go. I'm going to try another map by him. Hide and sneak. Oh, yeah, please. Hey, he did like multiple five nights at uh, five nights at uh, whatever's, you know. Like, I, I, I'll tell you this right now. If you're if you're a younger person, I may say something that's about to offend you. But as much as I love the Five Nights at Freddy series, I will not play very much from a uh, an author that has too many Five Nights tributes on their on their board or on their map list. Like I just, I feel like you know, y'all need to uh, just. Uh, it's, I, I, I don't. I wouldn't call myself a far part of the fandom per se. Because here's the thing: I enjoy uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, the the lore, and I love watching other people play it. I won't play it, you know. But I love the lore, and I love watching other people play it. Um, but like, I certainly, you know, I, I'm certainly not going to play a remake of it <laughs> in Doom. Um, so let's see here. Let's see how we did. Well, apart from all the edgy smudges, uh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna have to go in and like obviously do some spur uh, spur trimming, but um, I think that puts us to a point where I can finally do my glowy effect that I've been so very very much looking forward to doing. Uh, okay, and let's see if I can make this happen. All right, so I need that floofy brush there. All right, let's see what we can do here. All right. I feel like that did not land. Okay, so...
didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to. Yeah, but it's close enough. Alright. Permadeath and a hide-and-seek board. Okay, wow. Oh my goodness. What next? Permadeath and a soul's like. <laughs> Loose Screw 2 Episode 9 is worse than Episode 1. I, they do. They just get progressively worse. Like, uh, for Loose Screw, um, if I remember correctly, it's like Loose Screw 1 Episode 10 or something like that has, um, like, the worst, like, I swear to God, the worst uh, grid room build ever. Like, it, like, the whole thing takes place in, like, 15 square feet of a grid room and makes less sense than even most of the rest of the board ever does. And it's just nuts all over. And I think my, one of my other things, the things I think is hilarious is um, that... Okay, so remember we were talking about how like he doesn't like to use the next map setting thing? So what's weird about that is that he has all of these like things where it's like did you do did, did you do this in the last map did you do that in the last map and it's like if he used the next map setting it would track that for him automatically like he could just have an integer that automatically loads those things so he's trying to do a branching path story I mean forget the fact that none of the story makes sense to begin with but he's trying to do a branching path story and um like he, but he expects the player to to treat the whole thing like it's like some sort of a choose your own adventure book or something, where it's you know it's on, on your honor to pick the one that you wanted to do. You know, and it's like and again, you know, like Snap Map can already do all that stuff. Oh, that's whoops, wrong layer. Okay, so we head back down to our shade base. I said we head back down to our shade base. Oh, that's the color base. Okay, so we got to merge the... There we go. I see what's going on here. Okay, layer merge down. Okay. Now that should work. There we go. All right, and actually we want the sharp brush here. Okay. What happens if the NTF arrive? It's just game over. I'm removing that in the next ups update. Oh, okay. Alright, so... Oh, yeah, I need to... I need to purple the background here. There we go, and there we 
There we go. Mm. Knock on it. Okay. This is just the cleanup phase now. But we are almost done with this first component of the poster. I'm excited. Is everybody else excited? I am hyped. Yeah, two minutes of playtime. That's, yeah, that's about par for those things. They're between two and five minutes, and apparently we are expected to take them all very, very seriously. I uh, I feel like I have to apologize for introducing introducing everybody here to the madness that is loose screw. I th I really think it's one of those things where humanity would be better off if loose screw just sort of went away. <laughs> and I don't say that about a lot of things. I'm I'm a huge advocate of creativity in all its forms, and I've even told. Uh, perfect pastel on re not repeated occasions. Hey, I'm not here to stifle your creativity, man. I think you're very creative. You know, <laughs> I just, I think the problem is you don't know how to tell a story and pretty much loose screw seems to only exist to try and tell a story. So I feel like, you know, if I could give you some feedback that, you know, if you wanted some feedback on, on proper storytelling techniques or how to get your point across, then I would be happy to give that to you. And, you know, but, you know, getting pissy and trying to fight me when, uh, when I tell you the same thing every reviewer says to you and you still think that, uh, like he had this other thing for the longest time where he thought, oh, well, I respect you. That's why you need to, um, like my maps. And it's like, that's not really how respect works, you know, that's not really how anything works. I mean, you know, I wouldn't be a very good reviewer if I was just telling everybody, oh yeah, great job, keep up the good work, you know? Like, you know, I'd, what good would my opinion be? If everything's great, then nothing's great, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Virtual reality demon simulator sounds neat. It's on the review queue. Oh, I played that one. Um, it is a, a, okay. So here's what happened. I played it thinking it was going to be kind of stupid, and it was actually kind of cool. It wasn't great, it but there was some cool stuff do, going on in it. I really dug it. So, yeah, virtual reality demon simulator is actually pretty cool. Uh, it does this uh, cool. It has like a cool glitchy thing that it does. I c I don't want to spoil too much, but yeah, I think I think you'll like it. Let's see. Oh, we're getting close. Is everybody excited? It's almost done. It's almost well. This part, the first part of many. This was. This would probably get us to maybe what the fifteen to twenty percent finish mark. Probably not even. Although to be fair, this is probably one of the harder bits uh, that I was really worried about. Although the hardest one is definitely going to be that mech. I am gonna. 
There's so much I'm going to be doing off stream to prepare the mech that because I don't think I'm going to I I don't I don't I definitely don't want to subject people to the full you know <laughs> trying to like get that complex ass mech sort of where it needs to be and where all the lines are and stuff. So I uh I may or may not draw that one on stream. We'll f I'll think about it, but still But yeah, the virtual reality demon simulator is definitely like one of those maps that is the very reason I like hitting up the review queue. Two, two of my, two of my favorite mappers that nobody knows about are Ford Forest and Vetinari, and, and I like I know why. I mean, people probably wouldn't like their work if they knew about them. Like they're they're just sort of weird, but they do funny stuff that I, I think is kind of hilarious. Like, um, Vetinari will build a really neat-looking custom Geo board, but you'll have to play, like, 20 minutes of the most god-awful crap to get to it. Like, uh, you'll, you know, just, just bizarre, just slap map kind of stuff. And you'll spend literally 20 to 25 minutes just slogging your way through slap map crap. And and then you'll just walk into a room and all of a sudden, oh my god, you know, it's like this humongous, awesome custom geo build. And you're just like, why the heck did he build Barry? He's like, it's it's it, I, I, it's awesome, hilarious in a lot of ways. So, all right, check it out. Check it out. Let's um, let's convert this back to white first because. Uh, But yeah, this is my first time catching an art stream, maybe, unless I was here for the Baron, don't remember. Either way, good stuff. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just got done drawing um, JR Crash's uh, uh, avatar. It's going to be part of a poster I'm doing for Psychotron. Let me see if I can get the whole gang out here. One second here. So behind him is going to be a mech, and then looming way up in the top is going to be Psychotron. And then there's going to be some other elements in there, but um, I'm just sort of working on it one piece at a time right now. Um, so for now, though, the... Uh, whoops. Uh, for now, though, I've got uh, the JR Crash model completely drawn up. So... Um, pretty happy with the way that came out uh, there's a little bit of uh, like weirdness on the the arm shading that I'm not 100% crazy about but I can live with it you know um, I mean there's gonna be a lot going on in this picture nobody's gonna stop and go hey this one thing is missing um, although mm, yeah, there's not really enough of it to justify so I'm just gonna leave it I think but um, but yeah that's uh, that's essentially JR Crash's armor right there so I'm uh I'm pleased to present it. <laughs> um is that guy gonna be awesome to see the full thing? Yeah, no, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a whole thing, man. Um and the best part is that I'm gonna be um I uh uh JR Crash and I are gonna be sharing the copyright on it. So um if if it comes out really, really well I'm gonna be able to sell T shirts and posters and stuff of it. So if you know you want your own Psychotron poster that nobody but you and your close Snap Map friends are gonna get, then I will be you know, be able to make those available. So very much looking forward to that. Okay. But yeah, um let me think here. I think what I wanna do is uh give uh JR Crash kind of an opportunity to let's see here. Boop boop. Uh yeah, so that's that's that right there. And then uh hey you know, Bopkins, if you're watching this man, go ahead and get yourself a screen grab of that. You've already got yourself uh you know, some cool artwork you can use for whatever and uh with more on the way, but now we've got this cool little isolated uh, pick of your of your avatar there 
and um, you know uh, in in Zilla's drawing form I guess so um, but yeah that's uh, that's that um, so a couple quick things uh, again want to thank everybody that decided to join me and hang out with me today it sucks piece of pie that you're you're getting here so late because uh, uh, we had a fun uh, I want to say it was, it was probably a couple hours to get to this point um, but uh, fun does need to start uh, stop somewhere and I'm not gonna have enough time to start that mech tonight and I gotta start dinner in about you know 30 minutes so um, yeah but that's where we're at um, I do plan on continuing this again if not tomorrow then Tuesday and uh, I'm yeah I may I may even do some more streaming on twitch tonight I'm an affiliate now so uh, <laughs> I gotta represent you can uh, subscribe now and get access to the exclusive Cory emoticon uh, which is awesome so uh, in any case, uh, that's going to be it for me. Once again, I want to thank everybody for joining me. Uh, if you want to commission your own piece of artwork, uh, you know, definitely reach out to me. You can send, you can leave a comment on this video. Uh, you can, you can uh, get a hold of me through, uh, you know, the messages or through Twitter. Uh, you can also check my my page on Facebook as Portraits by Zilla. Uh, and uh, the links for all that should be in the description of this uh, of this stream or this video if you're watching this on VOD. So, um, but yeah, there you have it. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, again, really want to apologize about the the cutting in and out that was happening with the stream there. Um, my computer, she is poopy. So, um, but that should ease up once I uh, get a little further in. So, all right. Uh, have a wonderful day and a pleasant tomorrow. And if you haven't already, I do hope you choose to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>